<laughs> Morning. I wanted to take this time to do a little prophecy review real quick about the coming of the Lord and the day of the Lord and the rapture because today was a day that a lot of people were unfortunately waking up discouraged because they were still here. <laughs> Some days I feel like that too. But the reality is, is that there was a, a gentleman who, in great sincerity and complete study of the scriptures, honestly believed that today would be the day of a snatching away, a violent taking from the earth. Those believers that were looking for Jesus' soon return and coming again for his bride, for those who were prepared to meet the Lord in the air, that we often call the rapture or the harpazo, that in Jewish studies, if you went into the word or the, the I'd say hermeneutic in Greek, and in the Hebrew, there's a different word for when you're looking at words, because you see, in Hebrew, words convey a thought. For instance, like in ages to ages life. We use the word eternal life in the English and in the Greek we use eonio. But in the Hebrew, there's a phrase for that because it means more than just eternal. It means ages to ages to ages in a never ending succession of something happening in each one of those ages so that we're assured of something new or something different that would separate one age from another age. So in the same way, that the rapture has been kind of blown out of proportion by some people to say, oh, well, we can't find it in the scripture because it's really a phrase that was meant to be snatching away, to be rescued, to be delivered. It can also mean to walk away with God. Um, if you looked at the word Natsal, you'd find it in Hebrew because it's not just a quote unquote Scottish woman's idea. It's not like something that's brand new or something that the ch early church didn't know. Of course they knew. We all knew. We all know if you really sit down and ask God. Because, you see, people that don't believe in the rapture, it's interesting is that you never hear them talking about Jesus that much. They talk about religion and church, but they don't talk much about Jesus. So, if I could give you an encouragement, you know, today the world did not end. That doesn't mean that the return of Jesus isn't going to happen in the way that a lot of people are looking forward to, which would be called the Nazal, Harpazo, uh, Rapturos, Rapture, however you want to use the word, but that we know that the Lord's coming is near. And for me personally, I want to encourage you that, no, I don't believe that'll happen in 2011, and I don't believe that'll happen in 2012. I believe that you should always be looking for the Lord's return because, to put it bluntly, you know, as graphic as this may be for you today, and maybe you haven't thought of it this way, but, you know, if you died today, that would be a rapture for you because you would go unto the day of the Lord and you'd be caught up with the Lord in the air because it says they which are dead would be caught up. So, since no man knows the day or the hour that they're going to die, that too is a form of rapture. That's not what the scripture meant when Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, but it also does apply, likewise, to your imminent death, because you could, frankly, with the statistics, die any day, or any hour, <laughs> God forbid, or God bless you if you do, because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Isn't that a wonderful thing? But for a lot of people, today is a sad day where they lose their faith for some reason, that because they made a mistake in their eschatology, that they no longer might follow Jesus. So they built their faith upon something other than the person and relationship with Jesus. So I wanted to take this moment to encourage those that possibly have lost their way. In 2 Thessalonians 2, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of the Lord is at hand. 
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, stirs in the temple, or sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself to be that he is God. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you all these things? And you know that, and you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. But a mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of that truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. You know, a lot of people take portions of Scripture, like all these that are highlighted here, and they say, oh, but this Scripture says, so we don't believe in the nature. But this Scripture says, and we believe in the nature. But this Scripture says, and we can I give you a hint? As one who has studied prophecy for a long time, 30 some odd years, and who has seen the dates come and go, and people get excited and less excited, what you study and what the Lord leads you is for a reason. God designed you to move in fellowship with Him so that you would be prepared for each day that you live, that you would be able to meet the day and greet it with possibly sunglasses on when the bright sunlight comes on or, or <laughs> some, some uh, skin preparation so that you, know, you have sunblock so that you don't catch cancer. But the reality is that so that you would have the tools, the ability, the knowledge that God wants for you to be that person He wants you to be today as you hear his voice. As the provocation says, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So, the world did not end for you today, but it gave you an opportunity to share Jesus in a personal way. That you can not be antagonistic, you know, towards those who look to the Lord's return. Because if you look at the letters to the seven churches, there's seven different types of churches there. And, you know, some of them are lukewarm, some of them are good, some of them are bad. Some of them, you know, kind of doing their own thing. But each one of them represents a type of church that exists right now, as well as some that existed back then, as well as some phases of what most churches will go through. And you can see that in any, any church or any denomination that they actually go through these stages. But in so looking at it, there's a certain church type that you fit in today. And you can read it and see what the blessings are and the curses are and the warnings are and the blessings are. And so some are being prepared to meet the Lord in the air because they will. Some may not make it that far. You know, the Lord may tarry, as I say he does, until after 2012, after we're done with the camping error and the Mayan error and those things that will put it bluntly, cause a lot of people to fall away because they'll say, oh, well, you know, people keep saying the Lord's going to return. He ain't coming back. And that's when, you know, don't be surprised. Bingo. Some people are taken away. Those that look for his coming and that rejoice in the calling of God, that God has said, hey, I'm taking you out of there. I'm rescuing you. And then for those who don't, don't lose your faith. Don't think that you, you know, got this great blessing that, you know, salvation means you automatically get to go in rapture because no matter what, you know, you're going to be spared from the wrath of God because guess what, you know, God can do whatever he wants to do. If God wants you to stick around, you're sticking around. 
If you're leaving, you're leaving. It's not really that big a deal. But don't get worried about it or consumed by it. Do what God called you to do. And today, that is the day of salvation. You are called to share with someone salvation, what you've been given, what grace has been extended to you, what mercy, what love, so that you can share it with someone else. It's not about always looking for Jesus' return, because we are told to occupy, but we don't occupy by letting our possessions possess us to the point of we can't walk away from them. Enoch was a man who walked with God, and Lot loved God so much that he, he testified, he witnessed, he was constantly doing the work of the ministry of sharing the Lord's return, that God one day walked with him and took him up into heaven. That is what could happen to you as you faithfully serve the Lord today. So, in this prophecy watch, when I went to write my book, I wrote a book, a uh, book series, called um, Thousand Years, and it's uh, the first book was called Genesis. When I wrote Genesis, these are all the scriptures that I took in order to write the book. And uh, each one may, you know, some of them have pages to them, some of them just have you know, one little part. But when you study prophecy, there is a volume of prophetic, blunt scriptures that are easy to read, that have to fit together for you to have a complete picture. Most of the time, when you get these people who are so excited about one certain aspect of prophecy, they're not telling you the rest of the story because, frankly, you have a book bigger than this to put together all the pieces. It's for you to study. It's for you to learn. It's for you to apply to your life as you're walking with God and talking with Him today. Because it's easy to get misled when you take one scripture or maybe a hundred scriptures out of context. But to put it bluntly, Jesus coming back for his bride, there's there's a lot of prophecy there. There's a lot of scripture. And I'm just telling you straight up from my point of view and my perspective that nope, don't get so wrapped up that you think that the Lord's return is going to be today. It ain't. Or that's going to be tomorrow. Nope, it won't. Because I'm one of the ones that will tell you, yes, look for Jesus soon coming. We live in the last generation. We are the generation that will see Jesus return for his church, for his bride. And we will see those who will go into the tribulation period. Well, we won't see them if they're gone in the rapture. But those that are remaining that are not taken in the, the snatching away of the body of Christ will be remaining. And they will see the Antichrist in the tribulation period. But we will see all these things fulfilled because of Israel becoming a nation. And because Jerusalem became the capital in 67, that we know the time is at hand, that we look for the Lord's return. But I'll also be the first one to tell you that even though we look for that blessed assurance of being snatched away from these things that are about to come upon the earth, that we pray to be counted worthy, we do not, a lot of us, do not think it will happen before, after 2012 occurs, simply because the Mayan calendar is such a great way to try to deceive people into getting into a chicken little kind of thing where people go, oh, well, you keep saying it's going to happen and it doesn't, so forget it. What can I say? People have gotten all wrapped up into these alignment things, you know. And I don't think that, you know, God quite did it that way when Jesus was born. So when Jesus returns, it's not going to be in alignment of the planets. But there will be a sign of his coming. And we don't see it yet. So I'm sorry. For those of you who thought today that the end of the world was going to be today, for you, that there was going to be a rapture, it didn't happen. But as surely as the sun is rising and the rain falls and he causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good, today is a day of salvation for those you choose to set aside your misconceptions and go to the gospel of Jesus Christ that he commissioned you to share with every single living human being who doesn't know him yet, 
the mind because of what you could say today to bless them with the knowledge that you have, the wisdom God gave you, and the ability that He has instilled upon you by His Holy Spirit to share the hope of Jesus, the knowledge of a wonderful relationship with God our Father, that you, though you are not with Him in the Lord today as in heaven, but still on earth today, you can share that great salvation that you have received. God bless you, but don't get caught up and caught away with your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and let him lead you today. Don't be disappointed because it's not the day of salvation for you to leave the world, but it might be the day of salvation for someone who doesn't know the Lord, and that's why you're still here today. Thank you.